Okay, hello everybody. Good morning. Welcome. Um, this is just going to be um, a short sort of skill set session, really. Um, I had lots of requests from from partnership coordinators wanting to know more about how we put together the Sustainable Food Places Evidence Database um, and Impact Hub. So I agreed that I'll just uh, put together a short session, basically to show everybody step by step how to do it. Um, you might be really surprised to know that it actually is is very simple. Um, we're going to go through each step. There's going to be three steps, which is going to be firstly putting together the evidence database. So we're going to go through that and create a, a database together using Airtable. So if you haven't yet had a chance to sign up to Airtable, there's a free account you can go ahead and sign up to. In fact, I can put a link into the description um, if you haven't yet had a chance to do that. And then the other piece of software we're going to be using today is called Flourish, um, also a free bit of um, data software. So yeah, if you haven't yet had a chance to sign up to those, let me just put those into chat, a couple of links for you to go ahead and do that. Um, so start off with some disclaimers, um, because I am not a professional data scientist. Uh, I'm also not an expert at either Airtable or Flourish. Um, but uh, what we have been doing over the last year is doing this data project with the Sustainable Food Places program uh, and that's involved a lot of trial and error a lot of testing things out um, and in the end we came up with with this solution um, so you know fire questions at me um, I can't claim to necessarily be able to answer them all um, but I'll, I'll give it my best shot um, with questions in mind we're going to try and do it step by step all as a group um, so we're going to try and give everybody time to, to go through the steps um, if you end up falling way behind don't panic um, the session is being recorded um, and will be shared later so you can go back and um, look at the look at the step by step um, again later on if you want to. Um, so so yeah, um, without further ado, I think we'll we'll crack on. So we're going to start off with um, the first part, which is going to be the creation of of a database. Um, this is this is the step to be able to do any kind of visualizations um, moving forward. We need to have a record of what we've done um, and the impacts that we're we're having. Um, and the way that we decided to do that was to use Airtable, which is just a bit of, of free software um, that allows for sort of quite intuitive, interactive engagement um, with, with database information. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll just get started. So if you want on your screens to go ahead and pull up Airtable. Uh, apologies also, because I'm going to be working across screens with quite a few different things up. So if you have a question, best just to shout out, because I might not be able to see um, hands being raised, so just feel free to to shout out. Um, so what I've got open in front of me now is actually just our completed Sustainable Food Places evidence database, um, which you likely have already seen based on the fact that you're in this um, this meeting. Um, but so we're going to start from scratch. So we're going to go ahead and, and open up our our Airtable. So if you've got an account, we come to this space, which is called. Uh, workspaces. This is where you create the areas that you want to have your um, your databases. So I'm just my I know it's up as well on a different screen. So first thing we want to do is is create um, a workspace. So on our top left hand corner up here, we can see that it says all workspaces, and we just want to click here, which says create a workspace. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now, and call it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine SFP Evidence Database Example. And that just gives a space for our database uh, to be created. Can I just double check that everybody is with me up until now and have got the basic Airtable up and in front of them? Anybody that want me to just to take a second to slow down before I go ahead and plow on? No, great. OK, so with that open, we uh, oh, we've got someone in the, in the lobby. Let me just let them in with me. There we go. Excellent. So with the workspace created, hi Sam, by the way, come on in. Um, and then we're going to go down to the bottom left hand side. We can see here this says create, this big blue button with a create plus sign. And we're going to want to select our workspace, which is here. So it says workspace, select a workspace, we click there, and we can click down onto the workspace that we've just created, which is SFP evidence database example. Click on that, and we can click start from scratch. And here we go. Here is the empty database. So this is going to be the, the framework that we're going to put everything else in. So I'm just find my notes again. Yeah. OK, now it's time we add some columns into our database. So the first column we're going to add in is 
the evidence section. So this is where we're going to put <laughs> our information on what we've done as a partnership, what our actions have been, what activity has taken place. So we're going to type that in. Evidence in this name section. And here we have a drop down menu below it. This drop down menu allows us to decide what kind of data we want to input into that column. And because the evidence section is going to be mostly text, it's going to be us talking about the activities that we've done. We're going to go ahead and select the long text section here, which allows you to write essentially paragraphs of text that you can put in. So we'll click that. And we'll click save. And there we go. And then so here we've got our first column, which allows us to write whatever we want to write. So partnership evidence. Here we go. Cool. And on this next column, what we want to do is add a column and we can double click on it again to get it to pop open. And we're going to call this one impact. And what this column will be used for later on is to follow any activity that we've done in this evidence section. If later on, say we've done uh, an impact report, say we've done some evaluation, say we found out something that's happened as a result of that activity, this column provides a space for us to be able to record that here. So again, it's going to be a long text because we're going to be using um, a text data input here. So impact, long text in the drop down menu, and then we're going to go ahead and click save on that there. Great. And now on this next column, we're going to put in a new variable, which is going to be called partner. And this is instead of going to be long text this time, we're actually going to go ahead and select. You can see this is the, the, the selection here of the different types of data that you can use. We're going to use one. I'm going to use this a few times today. It's called multi multiple select this one here. I'm going to click on that. What this allows us to do is to have some options around um, the, the different, uh, in this case, partners that we, we want to select. So one of the options we're going to put in here, first and food foremost, is the food partnership. And what this drop down is going to be uh, help us to do is record one, the actions of what we do as a food partnership, but also give us the option to record the actions of partners. So let's say that we want to record some impacts of um, some of the partners that we work with. Maybe it's some of the charities that we work with. Maybe it's the local authority or maybe it's um, the local food bank, whatever our partner might be in that case. So this gives us an option not only then to record and categorize the work of, of ourselves, the activity of food partnerships, but also gives us a space to be able to start logging and start tracking the activity of our partners. So I'll go ahead and click save there as well. And then so I'll just add something into the impact section here. What we can see is we can click and we can put in food partnership there. So we can start to have our partners listed and in relation to their activity and impacts that we're recording as we go along. This next section, click again on the top column. We're going to add a new column together. It's going to be called um, FP role, food partnership role. And again, we're going to click on that drop down and it's going to be a multiple select. And the options that I'm going to put in here, and we're going to have a, a brief interlude to talk about why it is that I've chosen these options, but we're going to put in deliver. We're going to put in influence. We're going to put in coordinate. We're going to put in amplify. And we're going to put in instigate. So that's deliver, influence, coordinate, amplify, and instigate into that section there. And we're going to go ahead and click save again with a multi select. And you can see again, if we go through, we have the option then to click on these. Now, why have I chosen those? This is it's a bit of an interlude because we're going to probably do a whole other session to talk in more detail about the sort of the framework that um, that we've created around these different elements. But we have been doing some work recently, really trying to get to the bottom of exactly what it is that a food partnership does. And we went through all of the reports that we've collected over the last 10 years um, and done some analysis of that, to sort of really start to identify the key areas that a food partnership has activity. Um, and out of that, you can see this um, this word cloud here. What you'll notice there is um, essentially a lot of what you might think about is sort of soft skills of 
amplifying, of connecting, of networking, of bridging, of convening, of sharing. Um, and these ultimately are the actions of food partnership. This is where the actions of food partnerships uh, tend to be focused on. And from out of those sort of um, bigger selections of different activities, we reduce those down into five key areas that food partnerships um, have activity. So you deliver projects in your own right, your own projects and programs, you directly involve yourself in food action. But you also coordinate action across the food system. You share knowledge, you connect st stakeholders across sectors and you bring people together. Often you can influence local food decision making. You can influence local food policies and strategies, as well as influencing sort of the hearts and minds of people through campaigning and public engagement. You also instigate work, so you seed work. You're not necessarily delivering it, but you're often the, um, those that help to start the work to begin with. And you also amplify and platform the work of others. Um, we found from experience that food partnership coordinators often really undervalue these um, aspects of work and um, often undervalue the, the sort of coordination function, that convening of bringing people together. So the reason I brought that up here is because I really want to encourage you to apply this to your own work. So in that food partnership role section, when we've got those different elements of food partnership activity, here now is an opportunity. Once you start to log your evidence, once you start to put stuff into this, and we're going to talk a little bit more about how you start to collect evidence shortly, you have an opportunity to sort of isolate it into a specific area of your of your impact activity. So then over time, you can start to see this broad picture, not just of your activity, but also your role in that space. And that becomes really important when you're then trying to backtrack, you know, what is your impact as a partnership and how have you impacted um, the role and the work of, of your partners? So we'll leave that there. We're going to do a whole other session talking in more detail about the impact framework itself, but just wanted to give you some context to why we've chosen um, those different categories for the FP role section section there. Great. Let me just quickly make sure I give other people permission as well. Apologies for those that joined late. I had the settings set up, so I didn't have permission to give cameras and mics. So let me just go ahead and make sure you all have permission to speak up if you if you want. Bear with me a second. Can you just put the roll slide up again, please, Callum? I can, yeah, bear with me. Let me just get that. I presume it must be the setting in Teams where I had it set up to block everybody's mics. Apologies for that. There we go. Yeah, there you go. Is that okay? Perfect, thank you. So, OK, so we've got the role section in now. Let me just pull my notes back up. So we're starting to already be able to isolate some of our activity there. And, and uh, later on, we can start to think about how we can apply that um, to talk about our impact. Um, but we've got the FP role in. Let's also now add in another multiple select. So we're adding another column on the top and it's going to be multiple select. This time, uh, and this will be particularly useful for those that are um, going through the Sustainable Food Places Award program, um, but also perhaps just a way of being able to categorize your work. Um, it's useful now to put in, I'm going to call this SS, SFP theme. And this is the, the general work area then um, in terms of our six issues across SFP. So we'll put those in as food governance and strategy. Put those in as the good food movement and healthy food for all, sustainable food economy, catering and procurement, and food for the planet. So that's food governance and strategy, that's good food movement, healthy food for all, sustainable food economy, catering and procurement, and food for the planet. And that's on the multiple select. So we create field, and then from there, we can start categorizing things out. So if this was specifically relating to food governance and strategy, I just extended the columns, by the way, just by um, selecting over the top of the, the, the break of the column and pulling out. Perhaps this one is relation to healthy food for all. Perhaps this one is food for the planet. Perhaps this one is catering, blah, blah, blah. On this next column, again, it's going to be a multi-select. We're going to type in um, sub issue area or something similar into this one. And here, this is the option to then be able to um, 
be more specific around exactly what the um, activity is that you've recorded, what the evidence is, what the impact is. Um, so the process that we went through when we did this our evidence database, we did this what you would call inductively. Um, so we went through all of the data and over time we started to identify themes. Um, so we say, oh, that's related to um, that's related to food business or, or that's related to catering and procurement. And we started to create a, a long list of codes, um, which we then consolidated into into a list of sub issue areas, which seems to roughly capture um, all the different areas that food partnerships work in. I'll, I'll give you that list now, um, but of course that list will be um, you will need to be specific to your work and you, you will ultimately ident create that list inductively yourself. You'll develop it yourself. Um, but we'll go through it now at least to give you a, a sort of a foundation um, of the different work areas that, that we identified. It's quite a long list and I was sort of debating what the best way of doing this is. What I will do is is post it into the the team's chat, but uh, in the interest of doing this all together, um, I will also just literally go through one by one um, and, and put that in myself so we can all just do it at the same time. Here we go. So that's the long list. So then we're going to add all these options in. So I've got one here, which is uh, beyond the food bank. We've got one that is, oops, let's get some spelling right. We've got one which is campaigning. We've got citizen decision making. And the, for those of you that are familiar with the SFP Impact Hub, you'll start to see where the um, different segments of the hub come from. So climate change, commercial food growing. Oh, is that the change on climate change? I uh, got community well-being, got events, we got food aid, food business and retail, food enterprises, food infrastructure, food justice, food poverty, all the buzzwords, food security, food waste. Fundraising, knowledge exchange, learning and education, local coordination, local food supply chains. Where am I? Nutrition and health. Policy, political engagement, human, ready. That's race, equality, diversity, inclusion, for those that don't know the acronym. Coordination, regional coordination, research, rural, urban linkages. You got social media. And communications. We've got strategic action, which is actually um, um, actually I'm going to go ahead and leave off strategic action. We've used that um, as a way of grouping some of the different aspects of food governance and strategy. So it's actually a separate code. So let's remove that one. We move straight on to sustainable business, sustainable farming, working with children. Working with local authorities. Working with national government. And finally, working with schools. As I say, that that long list um, seems for us, at least in our review of all the data that we have to just about cover all the different areas that food partnerships tend to work in around. I mean, that list alone just says a lot, I think, about the scope and scale of the work of food partnerships. Um, but hopefully that will give you at least um, um, a place to start categorizing things into. So we're going to head and create field there. And again, I can just open that up a little bit further here. And this is multiple select you remember. So often you'll find that, of course, these things um, tend to um, tend to do multiple things at one go and we start looking at how to collect data you'll you see how quickly that starts to become apparent 
Um, I should know, and I, I will have to just have a pop sort of quick dig. Dig all of these um, SFP themes. The sub issue areas fit into those themes. Um, in fact, let me see if I can just pull that up. Bear with me just one second. This might be. Uh, here we go. So here you'll see this is our, our subtopic. This is what you call a code book. So these are how all the codes fit into those um, different areas. What I can do actually, I'll just snip that and I'll put it into the chat so we can keep that and keep that open. Um, but that's just for, you, for your reference moving forwards. So that's just how we've decided to group them. So that's how those subcategories fit into the overarching um, SFP six issue areas. I'll just pop that into the chat. Oh dear. Gosh, sorry, I don't know if you could see that, but my computer had a little bit of a meltdown for a second there. Here we go. There we go. That's in the chat for you there. Great. And then the last thing to add here is the date. Uh, and we can do that as a um a drop down again, sort of a specific data type. So when we click on a new field, we'll go back from that. Click on a new field down here, there's date. And we can just call that date of entry. Great. And that's and that's it. <laughs> and that is the foundations of the evidence database. So that's all we've used um, to be able to to start that building process. Um, so this is this is your opportunity to be able to have an easy to use, easy to access log of your of your activity and of, of the subsequent um, impact. So what are we talking about then when we're talking about um, the evidence that you might put in here? Well, the way that we've generated that evidence and, and for those of you that have been sort of lucky, if you like, um, to already be a part of, of our Airtable analysis, um, we went through and reviewed a huge amount of reporting data. So everything that was submitted to us um, by you, um, those of you that have received um, grants from us um, over the last over the last five years um, are already within that database because you submitted a whole bunch of stuff that looks just like this. Um, so this is just information that you might have. This is one example of, of a re reporting document, but you might have your own reporting documents. You might do annual reporting. Um, you might have done some of your own evaluation work, um, whatever reports that you might have to start to pull on. Um, and if we look here, what, how we started to put evidence in there, we actually used a bit of software um, called Envivo, which is um, sort of social science research software, um, but it can be just as easily done with Airtable, but you might take something like this. So this is just a random one and pick. This is from Dumfries and Galloway's. Here they've got a statement, support the development of the community food network, which creates a collective voice for the community food sector. All right, so let's take that as an example. Oh, that's me copy it. Oh dear, right, I'll do. And let's pop that in as an example. We can click on this expand button on the left hand side, by the way, which allows us to open up. I'll just do that again so you can see just here. It's expand button. You click that. It allows us to open up that whole row in one go. We can put in the information there. So let's have a look at that then. So we can see that. What they've done here is supported the development of a community food network. So in terms of the role there, it sounds like it's not a delivery role. It sounds like it's more of a, a coordinating role. And it sounds like it could be a, a, an instigating role. So we can pop those in there. The partner we're talking specifically, and this is because it comes all from our reporting documents, we're talking about the food partnership here, but we're also talking about, let's say that the community food network and, and the people involved, let's say that's Charity X is involved in that as well. And um, we know from the date on this, that this was actually done in 2022. So we can put the date in there, which is 2022. And we don't have yet any information on the impact of this, um, but that might be something that we want to go back and add later on. So we can go and have a look at the, um, we can add back to that later if we find out that 
however many people um, now have access to food because of this community food network or whatever might come out of that. Looking at that, we're seeing that this is mostly by the sounds of it related to our healthy food for all category. And if I go back actually to the um, to that code book, we say healthy food for all. What have we got in there? Community food growing, community well-being, ah, food aid, food poverty, food security. These are all starting to make sense as themes. They don't have to be super exact at this point in time, but just to give you a way of starting to categorize some of that impact. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say we got. It sounds to me like this is this is about food security in a general sense, food security. It might also be about food poverty, obviously sort of subtle distinctions, but let's pop that in there. And there we go. And that's one one line of evidence all coded up in there already. But there is an easier way of doing this. And um, this is going to move on to sort of the next step of how you can use this, because rather than having to, to go through that process of submitting evidence line by line, we can use a form. So if we go to our bottom left hand side, you can see down here this form. And if you can see that and we can click form plus and we can click like that. And this is then the beauty of Airtable because it does it all for you. We can just put uh, create a we can press, press continue there and it brings you to this and this is a form that you can use oh hang on is that there Let me just go back on that a second no sorry i should press create a form view so if you do that new form we can put evidence submission create new view there we go so click on form and then rather than continue, press create a new view. That's the, the new one that they're trying to sell you there. We end up with this form. And again, we can do that same process. So let's let's pick a different one this time. Let's say let's move on to something different. Um, let's look at. Here we go. Let's take this one. So this is another piece of, of evidence again from Dumfries and Galloway. We can have our form open next to us. We can type that in. Um, just. So instigated and coordinate the regenerative farming network, a peer learning network of farmers. So we can go ahead and select that through partnership this time. Maybe it's we're actually selecting um, in addition um, our, some farmers that are on our steering group or some people that we've worked with in, in for this project. FB role. Well, thankfully, um, Dumfries and Gallery has made this job easy for us because they've talked about the fact that they've instigated and coordinated. So we can put both of those in instigate coordinate sfp theme well it sounds to me like we're talking about food for the planet here again if we pop back open to our code book food for the planet we're talking about sustainable farming protecting the environment climate change food waste um, but we can also talk about uh, sustainable food economy here because we're talking about sustainable business and we're talking about um, food business and retail um, by nature of it being a sustainable farmers network so we can add them both in there perhaps Again, up to you really in terms of how you want to code it, but just to give you an opportunity to, to have them well organized. So we'll go down to sustainable farming and we can put in perhaps sustainable business in there as well. Um, wherever that's gone. Sustainable business and a good date again, it was 2022, so we can. Right back to 2022. Well, whatever, I'll do. Uh, uh, apologies, this is because I'm on the wrong. Excuse me, sorry. Anyway, you can click submit there and it will take you through and um, give you the option to be able to. It will just automatically add to it. Um, I think apologies. I think that's because I'm logged up, logged into the wrong, um, wrong, wrong workspace. But if you click click submit, it automatically logs and goes into the to the grid view there. 
What's great about the form submission is that you can share this. So you can share it to any of your partners. You can share it um, across your team um, and anyone can anyone can um, just use that to, to make an easy submission form. So as you're collecting evidence in particular for things like the SFP awards program, this might be one way that you want to approach it is if you get your partners to, to be able to submit evidence through the use of this form. And for you, that automatically then gets logged into this into this database. Another way of thinking about collecting the evidence of this database, and we've looked a little bit at reporting documents, you can also look um, at some of your news posts. So if you don't have the, the advantage that we had, which is a whole lot of information on, on partnership reporting, well, you might have a bunch of stuff that you've written already. Um, so if you look through, this is just Brighton & Hove through Partnership, for example. This is one of their recent news posts. They've done something about last year, the year in numbers. Well, again, if we look through here, there are um, lots of different um, things that we can very easily pull out and start logging. It shouldn't take very long. Copying and pasting here, you know, so we've got some we've got some impact figures here as well. So if we want to take out, for example, 25 percent increase in people using emergency food services across the city, well, we can take that out and we can um, copy and paste it in very quickly. We can say that this is about the food partnership and then this is actually impact. So we can even take that out of that column and put that into the impact column here um, and so on and so forth. Likewise, um, if you don't have that information to access, you might have your social media accounts. And this is just um, Cambridge Sustainable Foods that I've got open here. Um, so you could, there's lots of information here around an event that they ran, a cooking and training event, engaging um, with different communities uh, in their in their place, um, and lots of useful information here that you can collect and organise and, and put into the table. It's also um, use of this form and use of the table is something that you can look back on um, and track impact that you've had in the past. It's also a good way of being able to track your activity on a day-to-day -day basis. And this is something I really recommend if you're a coordinator. If you're doing an activity, say if you've you've connected somebody, you've convened something, you've um, amplified and platformed something, I really highly recommend using this form as a way of regularly just tracking your own work. So, and keep it really simple. That's my advice. If, you're, if you've done something today, let's say you, you've connected one part of the local authority to a charity. Let's log it. You pop it in, connected, housing department to local food bank, whatever it might be. Pop the partners down, pop your role in there as a coordinator. You coordinated that and then link it to the themes. If you're able to do that regularly enough, over time, you really start to develop this log of, of activity um, that you've created there. Um, again, it's not something we really have time to go into in this session. It's something that we'll do in, in another session. Um, but once you start to develop that log of activity, once you start to capture those impacts in the database, it provides a lot of foundations for doing some really quite rigorous impact um, methodological evaluation. Um, again, don't have time to go into that here, um, but just to, to sort of give some purpose to why you're collecting all this activity, as well as being able to visualise it later, later. It's a really good way of providing the foundation to be able to do some really rigorous um, uh, non-experimental evaluation work. Great. So for those of you that are lucky enough um, to be already included in the database, and apologies for those that are not, as I've mentioned, um, this was all done around our reporting um, from grants. So the people that have included in this are those that simply have, have been a part of that reporting process. Um, but let's say you are, let's say that you're you're Aberdeen. Um, and if you are Aberdeen or or whoever it might be, you can go away straight away and you can go to the Sustainable Food Places Evidence Database um, where we've done a lot of that work for you. So if you're Aberdeen, you can go ahead and you can select all those. Let me post a link to the um, to the evidence database in the the chat, bear with me a second. I'll access it as well. Here we go. If you click go through there, you'll be able to access the database. Check if you're already listed there. There's 55 partnerships, um, 57 partnerships that are included so far uh, with varying degrees of information recorded, depending on how many reporting grants essentially um, you, you were involved in. Um, but so let's go back to the, the evidence database then and let's say that you're Aberdeen. So let's go ahead and copy all of Aberdeen. And this is all the evidence that we've collected um, specifically related to Aberdeen. So we'll copy that. We can go back to our newly created air table. 
I'm actually just going to go ahead and clear everything that's here for the time being. So we're going to post in. And that's the evidence going in for, for Aberdeen. In this case, we know that the Food Partnership did all of it, or at least was involved in all of it, because um, this of the reporting data came specifically from the work of the Food Partnerships. So that was the focus for our work was looking at the role of a Food Partnership. You might want to include broader work in relation to your partners, but for the case of our work, we look specifically at the role of the Food Partnership. We didn't go through and um, categorize each uh, aspect of the um, food partnership role. Uh, it would be a fantastic thing to do, um, but would be a lot of work from from our side. But as I say, really encourage you to do that yourself. So have a look what that is and and um, categorize it. And again, we can just copy and paste the, the, the key issue areas for um, Aberdeen. So we'll go ahead and do that. The reason I'm doing this is we're going to use this as the example for the flourish visualization in just a second. So we'll take that. And we'll go ahead and copy that in. And likewise, the subtopic area. Go ahead and copy that in. Yeah. And the dates is all. 2022. We'll just leave that for the time being. So if, if you're Aberdeen or whoever you might be in that um, um, database, um, hopefully there's something there um, for you at least to, to have a foundation to start building on. Um, we, of course, were reviewing, I think we reviewed something like 300 different reporting documents, so like half a million words of, of writing. Um, so there's lots that we've missed in there. It's just a snapshot, really. Um, but hopefully there's a little bit of a, a foundation for, for getting you going um, if, you're, if you're recorded in the database already. If not, as I've mentioned, there's a sort of two approaches of reviewing your own reporting documentation um, and uh, social media, whatever uh, information you might have already stored, as well as starting to log your activity as you move forward. OK, so hopefully then um, we've all got the foundations of a database set up uh, and we're going to use this in the next step um, then. And you're going to be amazed how quickly we're able to do this, um, turn this into to a flourish visualization like the one we use on the SFP Impact Hub. I just want to pause there for a second as I realize that's a lot of information. Give everyone a chance to, to catch up and just ask if there's any, any questions there um, on this on this first stage. Nope. No question, okay. but just to show we're still alive. Um, it's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's a lot of information, I know, but I figured if we just do it step by step, we'll all get there together. Um, OK, so um, yeah, I'm about to show you behind Oz's curtain because um, it's amazing how quickly this, this whole thing is going to come together and you're going to be able to have something that you can use because we have this amazing um, piece of it's a new bit of software um, by the team at Flourish. Um, they were originally data journalists, I think, um, and have, have set this up. And what it is, is, is a, a template um, software that you're able to, to use all of their uh, visualizations simply by putting inputting the data that you have. Um, so yeah, if you haven't had an opportunity to start to flourish yet, go ahead and do so. It's free and you can use a lot of the, uh, a lot of the functionality um, on a free membership. Um, the, the pay membership is 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 quite expensive. Um, we haven't used it at all for ours. We've just um, made use of the the free software, uh, and you can see here the sort of the different approaches um, that I've been experimenting with uh, to get to the point where we did with the SFP Impact Hub because it took a while of working out what exactly might work. And if we click on the new visualization section, so once you signed in, it should take you to this area, which is your um, your projects, and then on the top left, new visualization. Click on that. And then, wow, what a lot of options we have um, to explore. Um, I've played around with, with a, a fair few of these. There, there's loads of amazing stuff um, for those that are interested uh, in, in data visualization, um, all with essentially no need to be able to code. Um, so they're all drag and drop template stuff. Um, and they're all, yeah, they're all, all really worth playing around with. Uh, and I spent a long time playing around with until I came to this section, which is the hierarchy section. Um, and this is what we're going to be using today. So on the hierarchy section, and you might have already noticed, oh, look, there's the dial sunburst. So if we click on sunburst, we get this preview that comes up. And you'll recognize it straight away. OK, yeah, 
it's not with our data, but it's getting close already. And we're going to type in whatever we want to call it. Let's call it SFP Evidence Hub example. And we can see how when you start clicking over it, for those that are familiar with the SFP Impact Hub, OK, yeah, oh, it's already functioning in the way that the SFP Impact Hub functions. So that's great. All we need to do then is input the data. So on, if we go over here, click on the data side, what we're going to do is we're going to clear this. So on where it says data, we're going to clear sheet. And we'll get rid of it, give us a fresh place to start. And then we're also going to go up onto this right hand side where we see this data. We're going to delete all of these because we're going to change these because these don't work for us. So we're going to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of that. We're going to get rid of info for pop ups. So then we've got a we've got a, a clear sheet to work with. If we go back to the preview. We've got nothing to display because there's no information there. So now we need to start thinking about how to uh, transfer over the information that we've um, just created into that visualization. Uh, sorry, into the database. Um, so we're going to type in um, some columns in the top corner. We're going to do the same uh, similar columns at least to what we did last time. Uh, sorry, yeah. can I just jump? Yeah. How did you delete those things on the right hand side? Oh. So if you just oh, click you into the box, yeah. You just put that away, but the other thing stayed. Sorry. No, that's all right. No problem at all. P feel free to shout out questions. That's no worries. Yeah, you just click into the box and, and we clear them off like that. Great. And then um, just, OK. So we're going to go ahead and drag some of that data in that we've created. We're going to use Aberdeen as the example again. So I'm going to go back to the Airtable that we've just created together. I'm going to take this evidence column. I'm going to copy and paste the whole amount with the shortcut, and I'm going to pop it into here. Great. Uh, and then likewise, for some reason, it usually lets me change the um, the name of the column. I'm not sure why it's not letting me do that this time. Bear with me a second. I'll just go back. Uh, OK, apologies. So actually, if we just go forward, it's going to clear that again. This top level one is actually your column title. That's right. So if we type in the column titles here, so we do evidence, we can do partner. We can do sub theme. And the ordering is quite important on this one. You'll see why in a second when we start to, to give the conditions for the visualization. So we go SFP theme. And then this one, we have to write actions recorded. This will all become more apparent as we go forward. And now we copy and paste in the data. So you go back to our database, copy that out, pop it in there. We're going to go ahead and copy out our partner information. In this case, it will be uh, the food partnership. Uh, in fact, let me just just going to go ahead and, and generate just uh, some some different data just for points of explanation, so we can see the different types that will emerge. So, excuse me while I do that. So we can have some variation there. Great. And then again, let's just copy and paste that in. Okay. I'll pop that in, and we're going to put this in the partner section. What we're going to do there then, I think it's not like in a way that I've copied that in. Let me just. Oh, there we go. Sub theme. So this is time we're going to pull the sub themes from our air table. So not the key issue area, but actually the subtopics. Copy those. Pop those in. And then let's take the SFP themes. I'm sure, over here, copy and paste those in. Excellent. Oh, oh dear. Let's 
just do this. Sorry, I just realized I didn't quite scroll up to the top there, so I'm just going back and scrolling up and just putting this all in this dummy information. OK, excellent. There's a slightly more complicated step, which I'm going to go back to in a second to explain, but let's just finish off doing this. Actions recorded. We're just going to need to put a one in all of those. So this is as it's noting that this is one piece of, of data to um, to visualize. So we're going to put a one in and we're going to scroll all the way down. Into this. I'm just pulling down here to make all of these one. So there we go. That's all one. Great. I'm just going to delete this bit of information that uh, didn't mean to populate. The risks of doing uh, live demos. Oh, we can just save that there for the time being, not a problem. Great. OK, so then the next part is getting this part right. And again, this took a little trial and error, but I can just tell you what you need to put in. So in the categories and nesting part, we go to D to A. So this is looking at these columns, D, C, B, and A. These are creating the categories for the visualization and is giving the hierarchy for how they nest within each other. Don't need to worry too much about that because um, Flourish essentially does it all for you. We're going to size by E. Uh, oh, we need to change this. Over here, you'll see that this is currently in a um, a text format. You can see because it has A, B, C next to E. So if we go and click on the drop down menu, oh sorry, click on the A, B, C, just like on Airtable, it gives us an option to change the type of data that we're putting in or we're actually putting in as a number. And we'll click apply to that. And this time, hopefully now at least, we can click E and it'll size by for us. Go and pop in some options for filter, which we're going to put in as D. And info for pop ops, which comes up as you're scrolling, we're going to put on to E to B again. So these are just referring to the um, to the different columns. That you can see here. Great. And now we have a visualization. So if we go back to the preview, you'll notice that it's not going to be not going to be right. And I'll explain why that's the case in a second. But there we go. We've got the foundations for our visualization. So this is all this the information that I took off from from Aberdeen. Um, so if you've got uh, data in the evidence database, you can go ahead and immediately um, create yourself a visualization. The reason that it looks like this is because I, I, I'm only remembering this actually as I'm explaining it. And I remember why it was it was quite a lot of work to, to get it right. Flourish can't have the fact that we have multiple um, categories within here. So we have good food movement and sustainable food economy. So what it's is seeing that as one category, good food movement and sustainable food economy. So what you actually have to do, and perhaps I can do this live, although this might be a bit more of a challenge, but if we get rid of all of this, and we have to we have to take them out individually from the air table. So I can give it can give a demo, but um it will be something that you'll you'll need to do um outside of outside of the session because it does take it does take a bit longer. So you actually need to go through and filter. So if you, you need to start off with um with the first with the first uh, of our sub themes. Um, so we can we can filter on Airtable if you don't know how to do that as a filter on the top left. Add condition. We're going to be filtering by subtopic, and we're going to start off with beyond the food bank. Then what we'll need to do is copy everything that we have in beyond the food bank, bring it back here. And type this in as beyond the food bank. And you'll need to go through and add them individually one by one. So you take beyond the food bank, copy and paste them in, add the next sub theme, copy and paste them in, add the next sub theme, copy and paste them in. Um, I'm sorry, that's probably uh, does anybody want to ask any questions on that? Because I realize that's not probably the, the, the clearest um, 
But all it is is that you can't copy and paste quite as easily as I made it look like there because you've got these combined themes. They do need to be individual, the sub themes. So you do need to go through and pull out social media and comms and it just to say social media and comms. So what that means, for example, on this fourth one down here where we've got working with local authorities, strategic action and policy, you'll have that put in multiple times. So we'll go through all of the working with local authorities as a sub theme and we'll put in the evidence. We'd also put it again when we're going through the strategic action. So lots of the evidence can repeat multiple times within the visualization. Can I so can I ask? Yeah. Does that mean that for the six SFP areas, you would need to choose one key one? And then the other question there is: does that also mean if you want it to be more than one sub-theme, you actually need more than one? lot you need to repeat that line of evidence that's exactly right rebecca yeah that's right um so you so do need to you do need lines saying the same thing multiple lines saying the same thing so if we go to the um the sfp impact hub um actually i can just do it through this so i can actually go ahead and show you the back room of the impact hub so here it is so this is what the data looks like once it's all Popped in. So I think there's something like 4,000 lines of data in this. And you can see here where we've isolated out the local food supply chain, specifically around catering and procurement. So it does mean that you have things at mul multiple times within the impact hub, but that's appropriate. Or oh, this is actually the different one. That's appropriate because um, different pieces of evidence do have impact across different areas. Um, so I think it, it, it's, we decided that it was okay to see it um, happen multiple times um, because those different areas. Um, have different areas of impact across multiple different themes. Uh, so just change there. So if we look at these things that will appear in, sorry, once it loads. Okay, apologies, it seemed to want to load. Yeah, so you do need to, you do need to isolate out each sub theme and then they will repeat as you go along. Um, so sorry, me again. Yeah. So I guess what what I'm taking from the flourish element of this, I've, I've I'm I'm like fully in love with Airtable. I, 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 we've had emails about it. <laughs> like I think Airtable was amazing, but I'm I'm kind of keen on one, you know, like that sort of idea of that IT idea of like one one point of information, and then you kind of you know you point back to that information so in terms of this flourish thing it feels like it's a useful tool to display the things that you know as yeah. opposed you know and you wouldn't actually keep going back and refreshing that it would be a way that you would say here's a snapshot of x that we've created um and not that uh, our our air table forms of people kind of like giving loads of evidence and sort of continually continually adding to it, it, it it's not going to be that because if you need to take information and and duplicate it it's basically a snapshot and then you make another snapshot another time I, I think that's that's a good way of putting it really it is a snapshot but there is a way of um, automating it um, or at least some steps of it so you can upload data to flourish. So you can do all of this um, in an Excel, um, which you can get from Airtable. So you can download your Airtable as a CSV file, um, as, a, as an Excel um, file, um, and then you can upload the data. So once you've got the, the sort of the, the template for the data set up in a, an Excel sheet or, or as a way of downloading it from your Airtable to take to an Excel sheet, it, it can then be a really quick process to update the snapshot, as you put it, Rebecca. Um, so you can it can be a really quick process once you've got the template set up to have um, a live one. So every time I update the Sustainable Food Places one, um, every time we have a new wave of information. So every time we do an awards round, every time we do um, a reporting round, or every time we've had a significant amount of, of new entries um, to the evidence database. So the SFP Impact Hub is is current, um, but admittedly a snapshot of the last time that we that we did that. Um, so yeah, apologies. The preview then is not quite um, as it as it should look, and as I say, that's because all of these are sort of the, the individual categories that we've created um, in this sub theme um, column. But there it is, and that that then um, will allow you to to start to to use and manipulate the data. 
Um, it's a little slow on this setting, um, but you can see how already it's starting to, to form out. Um, and we can there's lots that we can play with here if you if you want to um, in terms of the design of that. So you can change, for example, how much depth of uh, information um, you want to show if it eventually decides to, to want to load. Which it doesn't, but a little bit of a, oh, there we go. It's gone back to that. So that's one that's one level of the hierarchy, for example, and that's back to two. Um, what's fun about Flourish is then just how easy it is to get different kinds of graphs. Um, so on the top row here on this chart type, um, we can click on different settings and automatically get new generated ones. So I really like the circles one. In fact, I, I would, would like to get the SFP impact hub. Wow, it's very complicated with all the different subcategories, but there's an example of, of um, of how this can work uh, with a different kind of visualization. Super easy to do, literally one click of a button and all that information is visualized differently. And this is all interactive. So again, it's probably going to be quite laggy, but let's have a look if I click through governance and strategy. And the reason it's laggy is because of all the, the many, many categories that we've created. Um, but and if you, can, you can probably go all the way down here and it'll take you all the way down to, to the evidence. There we go. We'll back off there. The longer that you've created the impact hub, by the way, the more the less laggy it becomes. I think it caches the information. Um, the impact, the SFP impact hub was very laggy to begin with. There's lots of information stored there that got better over time. So once you've got that, all you then need to do is press export and publish. Um, so on this top right corner, export and publish. Since it's not published yet. You can click here, publish to share and embed. If we click that, we can click publish here. There you go, it's published. And then let's open that in a new tab. That is your dedicated space now. It's, as I say, it's not going to load because of all the information. Oh, there you go. That is your dedicated um, uh, address line for your visualization now. So you can straight away go ahead and link that within any of your social media and comms. But the other thing you can do, uh, it takes a little bit of playing around, um, but you can also. Uh, okay. Uh, we, you can also um, embed that into your website as well. So these are all easily embedded into your website. Um, the code is here for those that, that do the back end of their website. Um, there's different ways of looking at it. You can look, there's the script codes. Um, the AMP code is what worked for us. Um, again, it's, and it's just copy and paste. So you can just take that out and put it into your, to your back end um, uh, web development. And it should embed itself automatically into the web page. So it's, it gets a really easy way of being able to sort of update and add visualizations um, to your web page. And that's it. And that's it. It's it's sort of that simple. Once you've worked out um, how the template works and, and how to organize your data so it fits within it. Um, and it, it kind of is just the tip of the iceberg, really, with what you can do. This is sort of opens up a world of possibility of all those other visualizations that you can use. Um, the way that we use in the hierarchy, I don't think necessarily is how Flourish saw it being used and sort of storing a lot of quantitative uh, quantitative um, information. Uh, but yeah, really encourage you just to sort of play around with the different settings here and the different hierarchies. Um, you can also do things like look at the, there's a, a radial one, um, which which can look quite good depending on what information. Well, that's the nature of having all the different categories. But if we look at it on the SFP Impact Hub, um, you can see just the, the different uh, possibilities there as it opens up. There's another way of displaying the same information um, and you can click all the way through to it. It's not didn't think it makes quite as much, much sense this one, but it's quite pretty. So I quite enjoy looking at it. Great. Um, I guess I'll open the floor up to any questions uh, or any any comments. Um, yeah. I hope everyone was able to, to just about keep up with the different steps. I hope you all at the very least have got a um, evidence database now set up. I mean, our experience, certainly from the SFP award holders, some of those that are now achieving gold, um, is to really start that logging process as early as you can. Um, start tracking things, start tracking your activity, use it as a way of, of sort of tracking your own day to day work, as well as using it as a way to consolidate information that you already have. The sooner you start doing that, the sooner you get to a situation where you've got um, wherever our evidence database has, has gone, you know, we've got over 1200 different um, 
pieces of evidence now stored within our SFP evidence database. It took about three months worth of work to go through all the massive amounts of information that we have, but that's because we're working with 95 different food partnerships. For you guys, it might be simpler. And what is really interesting is that once you start to visualize even just smaller amounts of information, um, the, the hub starts to look pretty good. It starts to look pretty good. It also gives you an opportunity just to reflect when you start to have your hub developed. Uh, and we, of course, have been doing that in um, at sustainable food places across the network. It's actually just looking then where your activity is based um, predominantly and and where it's not. You know, it, it, we're not able to talk here about necessarily all of our our impacts um, because we're really looking at different activity within the SFP impact hub. Um, but you can start to see things that were which made sense for us in terms of some of the challenges we know we're facing continually with breaking breakthroughs on catering and procurement as well as sustainable food economy and the massive amount of work that's happening around healthy food for all good food governance and and good food movement building um so just as a way you can start to use that visualization which is ultimately about you know it's kind of a shiny thing to celebrate but it is also an analytical tool to start to explore your own work and understand um, you know where your activity is concentrated where you want to build build more activity Okay, so I open the floor to any questions. Anybody have any queries, concerns? Any thoughts at all? Just to say that um, was all amazing. Um, really useful to see the different tools and stuff. Um, I was just wondering, just thinking out loud, um, using Airtable as like the place to collect all the information and then um if you download it it's like a csv file into excel i think you could probably just split by delimiter you know on that yeah with the multiple things and then yeah. you can like unpivot it and maybe that would just create the different options as does yeah. that work it, do, um, it does work and that's actually how we did it callum um, okay yeah yeah um, but the, the risk of trying to explain how to split by delimiter on it. On yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no. there is a way, uh, what Callan mentioned there, is a way on, on Excel um, that you can, if, if you're familiar with it, and it, you can Google it, how to use a split delimiter on Excel. Yeah. It allows you to do that function of of breaking up those themes. So rather than having to copy and paste them yourself, you can, you yeah. can force Excel to do it. Um, yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, I was just seeing, yeah, if you tried that, if that would work. Yeah. Uh, so awesome. But the way that I would do it now, I have to say, is to use ChatGPT. Uh, okay. I would ask, I would ask ChatGPT to split those for me, and it will do it straight away. Okay, um, good to know. So, yeah, yeah. Great. Any other any other questions? Okay, good. We'll wrap up. We're just a little bit over time. The recording will go live. We'll, we'll share that around. So if you want to go back and and follow through the steps, um, then uh, you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, we're going to do another another. Um, uh, session soon on sort of the broader SFP food partnership impact framework. So keep an eye out for that. And we'll talk more in more detail about evaluation methods and how some of this activity data can be used to start doing some of that more rigorous evaluation methods. Um, but thanks a bunch for coming along. I hope it was helpful for you. And um, yeah, we'll catch you, catch you next time.